What's up YouTube and welcome to my channel Ignite Rugby. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell and give this video a big thumbs up. And as you said, he is such a good player, it'd be easy to sit there and put a bit of blame on the Sunwolves defence, three missed tackles, but when you've got a man with that class and that ability to evade... Amazing strength! What was impressive here is the speed, determination and the leg. It's not a TMO at this stage. Oh, it's in the air. Uh, no, that's, a, that's amazing. Oh. That's spectacular. And the Hurricanes, they just paused momentarily. Richie Mo Looks as if Simone thought maybe he was going to go off his right back on the inside. And that moment of hesitation meant that that man could get on his outside. Now, what is rugby? Rugby is basically split into two categories, Rugby Union and Rugby League. Now today I want to concentrate mainly on Rugby Union. It is the most popular rugby played right around the world and it is well known through everywhere. So no matter where you go in the world, if there's rugby supporters, you'll basically know what's for what. Stay tuned. Now, Rugby Union works as follows. There are two teams on a field with 15 players each. The goal of the game is to get the ball over your opponent's try line and actually ground the ball behind the try line or on top of the try line to score your team 5 points. Now, after a try has been scored, a kicker will be allowed to convert the try into another 2 points extra for his team. After the conversion has been made, the team will return back to the halfway line where the opposition team will then kick off. Now, I know it might sound confusing, but it is actually extremely basic. Check it out. Something special needs to come now from the Blues. Black over the top. Is that the money ball? Yes, it is. It is the money ball on debut. Black. Good looking kick straight through the so as you see the field in front of you we're just going to talk about this very quickly before we go anywhere else in the video um the field is 100 meters long as you can see it's very clearly indicated with a 50 meter mark in the middle and um it is about 77 meters wide uh what you have to know about this field is that the kickoffs start from the halfway line and the receivers have to stand behind the 10 meter dotted line the 22 meter lines are usually just signaling that uh, the game would restart if the ball has gone over the dead ball line which are the lines behind the rugby posts um, anything further is that uh, if a kicker receives the ball inside the 22 he's allowed to kick the ball directly out again but not anywhere else on the field except for behind the 22 and um, that's about the basic layout of a rugby field. Once a team is awarded a penalty, he, they have one of four choices. They can choose out of a punt, where they will kick the ball out of bounds into touch. They'll either opt for a scrum, where eight players from each team will bind in the line of scrimmage in order to fight for the ball in power and technique. Number three is a kick at goal. That is when the kicker of the team will be elected to kick for the post and win his team three points. Number four is tap and run. Now the tap and run is said that the player who has the ball or the player who attempts to tap and run has to tap the ball with his foot in order to put the ball back in play. 
Now, I know there's a lot of stuff I just said around the penalties and terminology I just used in the penalties that sounds confusing. Um, so let's just go through it quickly. Let's take a scrum, one of our terminology words we're using today. What is a scrum? Basically, a scrum is eight players forming a line of scrimmage and contesting with power and technique to see who's going to win the ball for their team. Now, how does a scrum actually work in content? Now, once the players are bound to each other, the scrum of which, are, which is usually your number nine, throws the ball in between the two teams. Now, once the ball is fed into the scrum, these two teams will try and hook the ball through to their side. Once the ball is hooked through to their side, the other team can only start defending once the ball has left the scrum. Check it out. No, no, leave oh, it. That's a great scrum. Both teams. Play it or reset. Good. McCaffrey throws a dummy and he puts it down against the post. It is a try to the Brumbies. Um, just tie him off. And McCaffrey carries, carries. And it's on the line. On the line and also up against the post pad. That is a certain... ...can cause a scrum. A scrum is basically caused from either a knock-on, which is another word in our terminology we're going to use today, and a forward pass, or a still standing maul. And maul is another terminology word I'm going to touch on just now. Now, what is a forward pass? In rugby, the rules are that you can you cannot cannot pass the ball in any direction except for backwards. Once the ball has travelled in a forward-like motion, the referee will then blow the whistle and award a scrum to the opposite team. Now, another thing that comes with all this terminology and that is quite used quite often is a lineout. What is a lineout? Now, think about this. The ball is kicked into touch and out of bounds. Oh, excuse me. The ball is kicked out of touch and into bounds. Now, in order for the team to bring the ball back into play, both teams have to elect a certain amount of players to stand behind each other in a parallel line towards the try line. Now, these two teams have to be a half a meter apart from each other where each team will elect one player to be lifted up in the air and contest for the ball. Now this is basically just basketball on a much bigger scale if you can set it like that. Um, so the hooker is usually the player who is elected to throw in the ball. Now but wait, who gets to throw the ball in? It's very basic. If we have two teams, Team Red and Team Blue, if Team Blue kicks a ball out of bounds, it will become automatically Team Red's ball. But, no need to fear, if you're in Team Blue's corner, you'll have the option to either lift a player in the air and contest for the ball and win it back if you can. This is the lineup. Check it out. Shots. This time around, it's a bank the ball in front. For Tyler Paul. Watching your side, mate. Blue's working hard in defense, but is it hard enough? Akra for the Mavericks got it lined up, and he's over. They get really tight here, bound together like super glue they are. A little bit splits off the side, they stick, and they go forward and get the try through. What is a maul? A maul is basically once the team has held the ball up from a tackle, and the ref has called the word maul. The team who has brought the ball into the maul will then have to either bring the ball out or they're going to have to push the maul and keep the maul in motion. If the maul does not stay in motion, the ref will call it, use it once. If the ref cannot see that the ball will not come out, he will blow his whistle and give the ball to the other team by awarding a scrum. This is a maul. Maul! Well, it's a good maul set up for the... Hawaii is sad to be desperate defense. They've taken it over. It's a mall formed. A mall is basically formed anytime and anywhere on the field, as long as the time and positioning is right. 
but malls are mainly formed out of line outs themselves in order for your team to try and push a few extra meters without using your skill in backline but basically power. Now some of the other terminologies that you have to know in a game is a ruck. Now what is a ruck? A ruck is basically once a player has been tackled and taken to ground another teammate of him comes and binds on top of him to protect the ball from being bothered from any other team. Now the rules around the ruck is that you are not allowed to handle the ball inside the ruck unless you are outside the ruck. But there's a few tricky parts that come into this. Once the ruck is formed, nobody is actually allowed to put their hands inside the ruck except the player who's, retrieving, who's retrieving the ball for his own team. Now, let's get into some of the terminology used by commentators when um, players occurring on the field. One thing that you have to know, there's a weird word called a grubber kick. A grubber kick is once a player has put the ball on top of his foot and it kind of rolls like a soccer ball on the field. Now, in rugby you're actually allowed to kick the ball and chase for it because it's a constant game and it's constantly moving on. Now, the second one I want to touch on is a drop kick. A drop kick is once the ball touches the floor and the kicker then initially kicks it directly after it touches the floor. Now, when does a, kick, a team use a drop kick? A drop kick is usually used when a player or a team has decided to try and drop kick the ball between the post for another three points. From Pollard, Pollard strokes it forward and it is good from Andre Pollard. It was the only option after all those phases. A little weak from Andre Pollard. And South Africa take the points that all their pressure, all their efforts deserve. They're back within one. Talking about the scoring met methods and a penalty that gives you a uh, kick a goal that gives you three points, as well as a drop kick that gives you three points. How does the point system work on rugby? Now it's very very easy actually if you think about it. You have your penalty goal kick that gives your team three points, and then you have your in play drop goal that gives your team three points. But in order for these three points to occur, the ball has to go between the two uprights. Now the two uprights are usually the words we use to define the rugby posts. Now, a scoring method that most people see and most people acknowledge on rugby is a try. Now, the kicker usually stands in different places on the field and how do you know where the kicker will stand? Basically, where the ball has been grounded behind the try line, that in line where the ball was, sorry, in line where the ball was grounded behind the try line, anywhere along that line, the kicker is allowed to kick the ball in. Follow through is good. The direction just as good as the. Sp Maria opens the score. Ignores the crowd. All right, foul play. Where does foul play come into a game and how do you identify foul play? It's very easy to identify foul play. First of all, we're going to use a high tackle for our first example. Now, what is a high tackle? A high tackle is when a player has tackled another player above the shoulder line. Now, law states that I'm allowed to tackle any player on the field of the opposite team as long as they are carrying the ball and I do it below the shoulder line. Now once the tackle has gone, started below the shoulder line and slipped up, it still counts as a high tackle. Now what happens once a high tackle has occurred? Once a high tackle has occurred, the ref will give a penalty to the opposite team. Now in tackling there's a lot of rules and the way you're supposed to tackle. Um, they call it a drilling tackle. That is when a player is picked up into the air and then drilled into the ground and not brought down safely. So, 
basically the rules around tackling is as long as you pick a player up in the air your it's your responsibility to bring that player down safely that's all for me today YouTube I hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't done it yet hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and just keep on hitting my videos man Link up here gives his pass away does he ground it try time